Hey, what's going on folks? Bonfire Fishing here. And so for today's episode, we are here going to talk to you guys about my most favorite subject of these four videos. So this is for the Cub Scouts and we're going to be talking about largemouth bass or any bass on that. So in this lake that I'm at, it has largemouth, so this is mainly for largemouth, but this will work for spotted and um, small. So this is all around. So um, before I get started, if you guys are new, consider subscribing if you find this video like helpful, informative, um, or if you just like it, just consider subscribing. So there are four things I'm going to be talking about in this video. I'm going to be talking about first knot tying, lure and bait choice, where to fish for your desired largemouth bass, and then fourth, how to catch them and take them off super easy I think this video should be done in like five minutes <coughs> bass fishing is just me so we are actually first gonna there are two different rods that you will use for bass fishing a spinning reel or a bait caster I like a bait caster a lot because you're able to catch bigger fish without worrying about breakage but with the spin cast the spin cast is needed for bass fishing for using lighter lures so like a ned rig for an example or a light texas rig so that's what i'm going to be showing you one of them but first we're going to start knot tying so a lot of people use the polymer knot on this but i'm going to show you guys the improved clinch knot again because i don't use the polymer so if you guys remember from the crappie video there will be a link down below of crappie and bluegill you slide it through put your you want to grab enough line, you don't need too much, but you need enough to work with. And then twist this, and like I said, most people say six to eight times on twisting it, but I say no. I say twist it as far as you can go until there's a little hole up front and near the eye. Like I can't find it, so I'm going to reverse it a little bit. And bam, there's a little eye right there. So I got like 12 of them, like 12 to 15. And then you wanna slide it through that hole right up there, grab it. Oh, game I'm done. Okay, slide it back through that hole, grab it while keeping your knot semi-tight. Pull on it just a little bit, and then you see that little opening right up there. You just wanna slip that through. And then grab it and pull on it and wet it down with your mouth or water and then you should be able to just to slide right to the eye bam not tied hope you guys can see that and then always have scissors on you or pliers so you can cut this line off got the, got the access tag line here there are trash cans behind me so I'll just go throw that away after this talking Keep this right over here underneath the lure so it won't fly away. I'll just put it in my pocket because it was flying away since it's a little windy. You guys might be hearing wind, I'm not for sure. So now we're going to move on to our second category and that is lure slash bait choice. So bass tend to eat a lot of bait fish. So their most common food source are shad, shiners, green sunfish, or just bluegill. And they especially love crawdads. So those are like five main live bait choices that they love. They will eat frogs, but it's not as common to see a frog be eaten as much as a fish, like a bluegill or a shad or shiner or whatever. So those are the live baits for a bass. Now we're gonna turn to the artificial. There are tons of artificial lures out there for bass fishing, but I'm gonna show you just a few of the common ones that people start out with. So first we got a Texas rig. So this involves a bullet weight and a worm hook. Just slides down. This is a really good starter setup. Super easy, just a weight and then a hook. And then people really, oh my goodness, this fishing line, put that weight. And then a lot of people take a Cinco. This is a Cinco, that's what a Cinco looks like right there. There's all sorts of different kind of worms, but this is the most common used. 
So there's a little like marking right here, like a little belly to where it's indention like inside of it. You wanna heat that facing towards the hook. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna work this worm all the way up to here. So up there, and then you wanna push it through and work it all the way up top, all the way to like your knot, and then twist it over, push it up some more, and then take that belly spot right there and stab it through and up out of the worm if you can. It's okay if you go inside the worm, but it's better if you go outside the worm like that. I think you guys can see that. So the worm, and then you wanna grab your worm, push it forward, and then push it back. And now you got a weedless Texas rig. It's not the prettiest, but yeah, you got a weedless Texas rig now. So whenever a fish bites it, it grabs a hold of it, it'll grab a hold, and it'll put the pressure right down here, which will expose the hook, and then you set the hook, and it'll go right into them. And you got your bass. So that's, that's the Texas rig that I'll be using for today's video to catch my bass for you guys. But next, we got another common lure, a spinnerbait. A lot of you guys know what a spinnerbait is, hopefully, if you bass fish. Most commonly used during the spring and fall, but you can use it any time of the year. It makes this, it has the shining and some vibration to the water that drive bass crazy mainly because of the shine and it represents a bait fish. And then next is crankbait. There are lipless crankbaits or rattle traps. Those work just as well and they're also a very beginner bait. These just go down and they get to your lower columns without you having to go on the bottom like with a worm or this is the middle upper column. So this is a good bait to get down there to the middle bottom column. So that's very good. So those are some baits and lures that I've showed you guys. Um, so I'm going to put you guys onto the chest, tell you where to fish for your desired bass. And then after that, I'm going to be showing you guys how to catch them and take them off. You guys should stay tuned. All right, you guys. So I am here explaining where the heck to catch your desired bass. And so for this one, there are multiple spots. Bass are everywhere. You can catch them anywhere that you want. But I'll give you guys like five main spots. Number one, this is the most new spot of bass, and that's shade. There's shade right down here, shade on over here. There has to be a bass somewhere in that area. One of these two, I guarantee it, there's a bass sitting under there. And then number two spot, rocks. Rocks are a really good spot because they use that as cover. Number three, limbs and bushes and, and sticks. Like there's a little stick right out there, but that's small, so it's not going to do too good. But they sit right under there because if a crawfish or a bait fish comes on over to hide they can go out and just launch at it and eat it number four of the spot is the grass grass contains the bugs and like the frogs and other little bait fish that come in and out of them and they love hiding under there that's grass lily pads weeds all that stuff and they'll just go out and just launch and eat those things and then fourth middle of the lake during the summer that's where in winter that's where they sit usually so we're going to start out right there in the middle of the lake and we're on number four, how to catch your bass and take them off. So with this Texas rig, you want to let it sink until it doesn't seem like it's sinking anymore. And then you want to pop it two times. I got a lot of videos on this lure. So if you guys press that subscribe button and press that notification bell on top of it, you'll get notified whenever I post a video. And in that video, I might be using a, a Texas rig or something. You could see how you really use a Texas rig. Alrighty guys, so I switched up again. I got the Ned rig on my light rod, so drag's looking good for this. So this is this Ned rig is called finessing. Finessing for bass is a way to where you're smallering, like having a smaller size bait. It's mainly used in plastics and worms, where you take small worms like this and drop shots like different kind of weights with them or a weightless but that's basically your finesse fishing encourages bass to, that are heavily pressured or heavy fished to bite i just had a bite right there there we go guys we got one. Oh, this ain't our guy that we need that's just a big old huge green sunfish wow it's a big green sunfish i think my camera's pointed it up oops sorry about that yeah caught this guy was not wanting him, so I almost wonder if these are the guys picking up my lures today. So this ain't our our fish, but alrighty guys, so let's get this green sunfish back. He's not our target species. 
So see you, buddy. Dang it. I was hoping that was a bass. All right, you guys. So I just grabbed my bass rod only. We're going to walk this lake until we get a bass. Or he was until he seen me. Oh, there we go. Oh, my goodness. What's up with this today? Are they even, like, bass eating this? It's like one just went underneath the dock and I lost it. Got him. Oh my goodness, another stupid green sunfish. I hope that this right here, guys, is not what keeps biting on all my lure every single time. Oh, time to get to this guy release. Don't want him. There we go. Well, there we go. That's a bass on that one, maybe, I think. Yeah, that's a bass. That's a nice bass. Out here. From out here, it's a really nice bass. Oh, my goodness. We got ourselves a bass, finally, guys. Wow. It's a really nice bass for out here. The bass out here is super, super small. Okay, so taking this guy off super easily. Ow. All right guys, so there's two ways to hold the bass. One, have your fingers like this, your thumb up here, and just just your pointer and your thumb holding it together. Or you can hold it like this, right behind his back, and he won't go anywhere. Those are the two ways of holding it. I like just holding it by the mouth, it looks more professional. And then take your picture, and you come on down here. There's more fish on over there too. He wasn't the only one, but we got the video done, finally. And then we say, see a big boy, a big girl, and you just drop her in there and she just goes right on off. See you, buddy. Alrighty, guys, so that's going to wrap up for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I caught a bass. So if you guys are new, subscribe. If you thought this video was informational, like I said at the very beginning, all that stuff. So make sure you don't forget to press that like button, subscribe, notifications bell, comment. Please, that'd be great. But if I missed out on anything, let me know down below in the comment section and I'll pin your guys' comment so that anyone that sees this video and needs more information, you guys can put down information in the comment section so they, they can view it. This video is mainly for the Cub Scouts. And so basically, yeah, comment down your pack or troop number down below. And that's basically it. But I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.